You're watching Nile TV International. This is Panorama News. I'm Ayman Salah. Hello and welcome. President Abdel Fattah Sisi met on Wednesday with Presidential Advisor for Urban Planning, Major General Amir Sayyid Ahmed, as well as the head of the Armed Forces Engineering Authority, Major General Iheb El Far, as well as a group of top military and civil executives and officials. The President followed up on the progress of construction and engineering works for major projects in the new administrative capital and the national road network. The meeting focused on the development and the construction and engineering works of the Egypt Islamic Cultural Center and the Mosque of Egypt as one of the largest mosques in the world. It also covered the diplomatic district, its headquarters of foreign embassies, as well as service areas and new unified headquarters of international organizations in Egypt, which will also be established in the district in accordance with international engineering standards with full coordination with the United Nations. The meeting covered the progress achieved in several national road projects where the president instructed an audit of all relevant studies to reach the desired goals and objectives of modern organized planning, traffic fluidity and reducing burdens of, of citizens within the framework of the state's comprehensive development strategy. The President also approved on Wednesday law number 75 for the year 2020 for the uh, economic social and the development plan for fiscal year 2021-2022. The first term of the law stipulates that the general targets increase total resources within the current market prices so as to surpass 8 trillion pounds and the total GDP to reach more than 7 trillion. According to the law's third term, the public treasury is responsible to provide necessary funding for government bodies and that the National Investment Bank provides funding to economic authorities and entities of the public sector governed by Law 97 for the year 1983. Four military planes loaded with supplies took off East Cairo Air Base heading to El Khartoum International Airport in Sudan. The aircraft carry large quantities of medicine and medical supplies from the Egyptian Health Ministry to help alleviate burdens on Sudanese citizens. This comes within the framework of Egypt's support and solidarity with the neighboring country. For its part, Sudan expressed appreciation for Egypt's support and stressed the significance of such assistance in boosting Sudan's health sector. The move follows President Abdel Fattah Sisi's instructions based on historical relations binding both nations. In other news around the world, the United Nations Security Council is to hold an emergency meeting on Thursday to deliberate on Ethiopia's recent unilateral decision to fill its controversial dam. Tunisia requested the meeting on behalf of Egypt and Sudan and submitted a draft resolution to the Council calling on Ethiopia to cease filling the reservoir and resume negotiations with Egypt and Sudan based on the joint invitation by the head of the African Union and the UN Secretary General. This is to finalize within a period of six months and the text or, or to finalize the text of a binding agreement on the filling and operation of the dam. <coughs> Excuse me. Moving on to other news, the container ship that blocked the Suez Canal in March and has been detained there since finally resumed its journey on Wednesday after the owner and insurers reached a compensation settlement with the Suez Canal Authority. A ceremony was held at the canal to mark the departure of the vessel loaded with about 18,300 containers. The head of the Suez Canal Authority, Osama Rabia, held a press conference following the signing of a compensation agreement with the owner of the ship, the Ever Given. Rabia asserted that the deal preserves Egypt's full rights and relations with its partners 
and thanked the owner for the cooperation and understanding to reach a settlement for this issue, adding that the authority gained from this experience, particularly upgrading its rescue equipment, and he reiterated that according to the authority's regulations, the vessel's captain should be brought to account. The Suez Canal Authority is to receive around 550 million U.S. dollars in compensations.